I love React hooks. They are amazing. And in this video, I'm going to show you five simple utility hooks that you can implement incredibly easily, and they're going to be useful in every project you build. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. In this video, we're going to be talking all about custom React hooks. As you can see here on the side, I have five different folders that contain our five different unique custom hooks. And I also have five different components that are just showing us how these hooks are used. And the first hook that I want to talk about is a hook called use toggle. Here we have our toggle component, which is using the hook. And then we have the actual definition of our use toggle hook. And on the right is how it works. As you can see, our value is set to false. If I click toggle, it just toggles the value between true and false. If I click make true, it's going to make the value true. And if I click make false, it makes it false. So this is really useful anytime you have like a modal or like a checkbox or something, you want to be able to toggle between these different values. And the actual use toggle hook itself is super straightforward. We just pass in a default value, whatever you want. This works just like use state because we pass that default value straight to use state. Then we have a value and a set value. And then here we created just a simple function called toggle. And this toggle just allows us to check here if the value we pass in is a Boolean, then we use that value. Otherwise, we're just going to swap our current value. So for example, if we pass true into toggle value, it'll set our value to true. If we pass in false, it'll set to false. And if we pass in anything else or nothing at all, it'll just swap the value with this toggle button here. So if we look at how we use this component, you can see we just have value and toggle value. And the toggle value here, we're just passing it nothing. So it's just going to toggle between true and false. Here we're passing it true, so it's always going to set the value to true. And here we're passing it false, so it always sets the value to false. This is something you're probably going to use all over the code, all over the place. And while the code is pretty simple, you could put it everywhere. It just makes it so much easier having this nice little toggle component hook that you can use and just use anywhere in your application. That's the great thing about these small little custom hooks. Now this next custom hook I wanna talk about is a use timeout hook. So let's just get the timeout here opened up so we can close out of this, open up use timeout so we have the component and the actual hook itself. And you'll notice this hook is actually quite a bit more complex. But if we just refresh the page over here, you'll see the value starts at 10. And then after one second, it sets the value to zero. As you can see in here, that's what's happening. We start out at 10, we use timeout, and after one second, we set the count to zero. Also, we can increment our count. We have a clear as well to clear out the timeout. So if I reset this, click to clear timeout, you'll notice that it doesn't actually reset because we cleared the timeout. And I can reset the timeout to restart it. So I click reset, and you'll notice it sets it to zero. I can increment some more, click reset. After one second, it now sets it back to zero. Now, like I mentioned, this is a bit more complex. So let's actually look at the code to see how this works. Use timeout works just like timeout. You pass it a callback and you pass it a delay. And that delay is how long you want to wait until this callback actually runs. And inside here, you can see we have our callback ref and we have a timeout ref. So we're creating a ref that wraps our callback and we're creating a ref that just is a blank ref for our actual timeout itself. And the reason we're creating this callback ref here is because if our callback changes, for example, this component renders multiple times, this use timeout is going to pass a new function every time, which means it's technically going to be different. We could solve this by using a use callback inside of here, and then that would allow us to make sure that this only gets called one time and this function is always the same, but this makes your code a little bit bulkier. It's kind of annoying to work with. So in general, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to use this ref here that just allows the callback even when it changes to stay same. So as you can see here, we have our callback ref. Every time our callback changes, we're updating our callback ref. This is really important because in our code, we don't want to make sure we re-update our timer every time our callback changes. Otherwise, if we update our component state, for example, like I mentioned, this is going to update our function here. And then that's going to update our timing. We don't want that. So then down here, we have two more functions. We have a set function and a clear function. Set function is using a callback. So every time our delay changes, so if we change our delay, we're going to reset our timeout. And essentially, it's just going to take our timeout ref and just set it to our timeout. This just allows us to clear the actual timeout. And then we're just calling set timeout. We're passing it in this callback ref. We're just calling it. So we're calling the function after a certain delay and we're saving the value for that timeout so we can clear it. And down here, we create our clear function, which again, just takes that ref, which just allows us to clear this and we clear it if it exists. Then we have our actual real use effect. This is the one that every time our delay changes, our set changes or our clear function changes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our function. So we're gonna set our timeout up here and then we're returning clear. So anytime that any of these things change, we're gonna clear out our timeout and restart it again. Then we have our reset function, which just clears our timeout and then resets it. And we're returning those functions. We have reset and clear being returned. And if we don't care about reset and clear, we can just remove that. So we can get rid of all this here. If we don't care about any of that, we just save. Now, as you can see, after one second, it just goes down to zero. So there's a really simple way to use use timeout, or there's the more complex way that includes this clear and reset. 
But in general, this is a really great hook to have because it allows you to create other hooks. And the next hook we're going to talk about of use debounce uses this hook. So what we need to do is just go down to our app.js and we're going to use this debounce hook. And I'm just going to open up the actual hook itself so we can view it. And debounce essentially means I want to run something, but only after a certain delay. So let's say you have a search field and you're typing into that search field. And then after you stop typing, you want to do the query to your API. Because otherwise, if you do the query every single time you type a letter on your keyboard, it's going to send like 100 queries to your server, and then they're all going to come back at once, which is really unperformant. So debounce allows you to get around that problem. So here we have a simple debounce component, which has a count. And our use debounce essentially says, hey, what we want to do is we want to alert the count after one second when our count changes. So we're going to change our count a bunch of times. And then if there's a one second delay between me changing the count, for example, now, it's going to alert out our count value. This would be like where you call your API. If you have an API, for example, you need to call. And this right here would be like typing in a value to a search field. We're just doing count because it's a much simpler example. So as you can see, we pass in the callback, the thing we want to call. We pass in the delay and then we pass in the dependency, essentially. When this thing stops changing after a set delay, I want you to call this code. Also, you'll notice when I refresh my page, it doesn't actually run this debounce on the first iteration. It only runs it after I change the count for the very first time. So those are important things to notice. So in our use debounce, you'll notice we use our use timeout hook, and that makes this entire hook really simple. We take in that callback and delay, we just pass it straight through to our use timeout. And then the important thing is that we make sure we take our use effect and clear it out. So we're going to do a use effect that runs at the very beginning, and it's just going to call this clear function. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to clear our function the very first time. So if we get rid of this, and I just save, you'll notice after a second, it prints out the count here. We don't want it to print out the count on the first iteration, which is why we're clearing it on the very first run. And since we pass an empty array, this only runs one time. Then our reset here, anytime our dependencies change or the reset function changes, we're just going to call the reset function to set our timer over again. So for example, our count here changes, we're going to reset our component to reset that timer. That was how the actual thing works, where as we change our incrementer here, what we're doing is we're just constantly calling reset over and over again. So we're starting our timer again at one second. And then when I stop for a second, it's going to print it out here. This is an unbelievably useful hook right here because it's going to be useful for any time you call an API that you need to delay it and wait until the user is done inputting information. And the next hook I want to talk about is going to be the use update effect. This one's really straightforward. Essentially, the use effect, as we've talked about, it runs on the very first time your component amounts and then every single time that the thing changes inside of your component. So every single time your dependencies change, it runs and it runs the very first time your component renders. This hook right here is just saying, hey, we only want to run this when our thing changes and we don't want to run it on the first render. So if I just refresh our page over here and I make sure that we have our update effect being rendered, you'll see that's being rendered in our update component. What we're saying is every single time our count changes, I want to alert out our count. So when we click increment, you can see it changes. Increment again, and it changes. If we use a normal use effect, and I save this, you'll notice that we, of course, need to import use effect. But if we save this, you'll notice it alerts immediately. And that's because use effect runs on mount. Now, obviously, we don't want that. So we're going to be using our use update effect here. So now you can see only when I incremented the first time does it count out to the screen. It alerts it. So this only runs on update. And inside of our use update effect hook, this is super straightforward. All we're doing is creating a ref that says, is this the first render? And we default that to true. Then we have a use effect inside of here, which just is like our normal use effect. It takes the callback and dependencies. So we have our dependencies and we have our callback, which we're calling. But we have this one section at the very beginning where all we're doing, we're saying, hey, is this the first render? If this is true, then we set our first render to false and we just don't execute our code. So the very first time our effect runs, it just does nothing. And then every other time it's going to run just like it was a normal effect. This is great if, again, you don't want your side effect to happen when your component mounts. It's a super simple hook to write, but if you had to write this all over the place, it'd be kind of a pain. So having it inside of a custom hook is really nice. And the next hook I want to talk about is use array. And this is probably one of the most useful hooks in this entire video. So let's make sure we have use array here, this component rendered out. And you'll notice there's a bunch of buttons here. So we're going to kind of talk about all of that. So the first thing I want to talk about is our array component. Dealing with arrays in React is kind of a pain because every time you update the state with an array, you need to make sure you take the previous array, you need to make sure you filter it, and there's like a, just a bunch of boilerplate code you need to write over and over and over again for all these different arrays. So having a use array hook that allows you to just save your array and state and then just gives you really simple functions you can use that properly update the state is nice. So as you can see here, it gives us our array as well as a set, push, remove, filter, update, and clear function. You can add more functions if you want, remove them, it's really up to you. And our array defaults to one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can just see we're printing out our array. 
And then if we click this first button, it's going to add the value seven to the end of our array. We're pushing seven to the end. I click add seven, you can see it's adding seven to the end. It's updating our state for us. Here, we're going to update the value in position one with the value nine. So we're changing the second element to nine. Click that, you can see right here, this changed to a nine. Now we can remove the second element. So we can remove that nine, remove the three, remove the four. And here it says only keep the numbers less than four. So as you can see, we kept only one. And then finally set one, two. So we're just setting our entire array to one, two, and then clear obviously clears it out. So filter here is the one we're using for keeping numbers less than four. Set allows us to just completely overwrite our array, and then clear is obviously clear. So if we look at this use array component, you're gonna notice it's kind of big, but it's actually really straightforward for the most part. We just have a use state that contains our array and set array, pretty straightforward. And then we have a bunch of functions that modify this array. So push just takes our current array as an element to the end of it. Filter is just going to be doing filter, it's pretty straightforward. Update takes in an index and it takes in a new element. And all we're doing is getting all the values before the index, then we're adding the new element and then all the values after that index and creating a new array from that. Remove again is just going to take all the values before that index and all the values after that index and it's going to cut out the one at the index we want to remove. Clear is obviously going to clear and then we just return all of that information down to the user. So you can make this more complex, less complex depending on your use cases, but this right here probably covers 90% of all your array use cases. Now this video is dragging on and I have tons of additional hooks that I want to share with you. So you're definitely going to want to check out part two. It's going to be linked over here when it's released and it's going to cover five more awesome utility React hooks. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.